Yo! What's up guys? I'm Charles, this is Wondergasm, and today I'm in Toronto. I figured that I would try and bring you another useful video, because who doesn't want useful videos, right? This one is especially for those of you who do lots and lots of travel via air. Pretty close to my heart. As someone who suffers from a lot of motion sickness, or at least used to suffer from a lot of motion sickness, yet still seem to find themselves on planes or various modes of transport all the time. I feel like I've come up with some pretty foolproof methods for dealing with air sickness, so I'm going to share those with you guys now, and uh... Let's see how it goes. So right now, I'm about to drop some motion sickness defeating knowledge bombs. <laughs> the following points and tips that I'm about to share with you were gained from years and years of flying on planes and suffering from motion sickness. Like, why did I put up with it for so long? We'll never know. These are all the things that I do personally when I'm about to get on a plane or while I'm on a plane to avoid feeling sick. My first tip, and probably the most important, it needs to be done before you even arrive at the airport. It's all about the seat that you choose to sit in. Now this might sound like a bit of a silly tip, but honestly, it's so important and it really can have a big effect on the way your journey pans out. So as far as I'm aware, and from my own personal experience, the middle of the plane is where you experience the least turbulence, you know. The back end gets more pivot from the wings, and the front end does as well, and like there's more vibration at the back, and like I'm not gonna, say, I'm not trying to say that the middle of the plane is going to be perfectly still, but it's at least shaky and it smells at least like plane, if that makes sense. Like those of you who know will know what I mean by that. Just picking a seat by the middle of the plane, that's not enough. No, you need to be way smarter than that. I personally find that if things around me begin to get stuffy or I feel like I'm a little bit squashed in the space that I'm in, then that can also make my air sickness a lot, is a lot worse the word, much more <laughs> gotten out to English, much badder than it needs to be. Again, I've probably failed at English there, but we'll deal with that later. Going from that, that would mean that the best place to sit is somewhere that provides more room for you, fresher air, and a cooler environment. For me, as much as I love to sit in window seats and get that beautiful view, this means always sitting in an aisle seat. Always. Aisle seat, preferably in the middle column, column <laughs> preferably, preferably, preferably in the middle column of the plane. There are several reasons for this. One, I find that if you're sitting on the edge of an aisle, the air passing through through the actual aisle itself is a lot fresher and tends to be, you know, a lot cooler as well. Imagine if you're sitting in between two people, there's a seat in front of you and there's tons of seats in front of you, going all the way to the front of the plane. That air isn't gonna have much. The air that does get to you is gonna be traveling along the top. It's gonna be coming through people's stinky breath, people's farts, people's armpits. It's gonna be heated up with all that body heat coming from the people around you. It's just not gonna be as good, right? Which sounds stupid, but if you get air sickness, you'll know what I mean. So if you're sitting by an aisle, that air that's coming through is just a little bit better, you know, a little bit cooler, a little bit fresher, and it obviously gives you a slight breeze going past your face, and that sometimes is all you need to keep you feeling a fresher on a plane, right? Secondly, again, if you're sat with nobody to one side of you, like the left is just an aisle, there's all that space there for you to move your body around, there's less body heat coming from one side, so you're not between two people emitting heat, they might be sleeping on you, snoring, elbowing you, just being a nuisance, right? You need to have that space and air to, to make sure you're not gonna start feeling sick. And finally, if you do start to feel sick, it's always good to have something a little bit further away to focus on. If you're sitting there and there's just a chair in front of you with a screen right in front of your face, sometimes that doesn't help at all. So sitting on an aisle seat is really one of the best things you can do to help with air sickness. Honestly, I could go on forever about this topic, but I'll stop on this point right there. Number two, this tip also needs to take place before you board the plane, and that is to avoid any big heavy meals before you get on or at least anything heavy in dairy or something that's just gonna upset your stomach slightly and make you feel a little bit nauseous before you even board it. So I'd say do that for at least a couple of hours before you get on board. Generally what I do at an airport is I get through security about two hours before my plane has to board and once I'm through, I'll grab myself two small snacks like a pack of crisps, a chocolate bar that I will just nibble on or eat as I'm waiting to get on the plane. Like I've got an hour or two to kill, right? So I'll sometimes save it when I'm on the plane but like that just keeps me tidying over until the first onboard meal is served. And that's generally all you need to do. Tip number three, and this ties in really nicely with the previous tip, and that is to make sure you stay hydrated. As soon as I get through security, along with my two little snacks, I'll buy myself a big bottle of water, and I'll just continually drink from it as like the, the next few hours progress. Like before I get on the plane, I'll sometimes have some for when I'm on the plane. Because let's be honest, like waiting for a, one of the air hostesses to come over and see if you're okay, and then ask if you need water, and then go get it. Sometimes they'll forget and bring it back. They won't bring it 
like it's easier just to rely on yourself to provide water and if you have that hydration and it does help a lot with you know your headspace and the headaches and the sickness it's just a good way to keep on top of things four and honestly i had to learn this one the extremely hard way and that is do not go out for a big booze up the night before a flight in fact don't even drink i would honestly recommend not drinking 24 to 48 hours before you water flight like a lot of people are fine with drinking on planes going out and getting on a plane hungover but for me it doesn't take much to to start the air sickness going like a little bit of a hangover or a little bit of like drunkness sometimes it doesn't help at all and it can make things spiral obviously alcohol does dehydrate your body the more you drink so again that doesn't help on that front but yeah honestly just avoid alcohol for 24 to 48 hours before your flight boards just trust me on this one too many times i've sat on a plane full of regret so much regret just wanting to die like just don't do it it's not worth it Number five, and that is do not wear clothing that will restrict and overheat you. I normally go for like some nice comfy sweatpants or tracksuit bottoms and then like a loose fitting t-shirt and a hoodie that I can take on or off depending on how hot or cold I am. It's an airplane flight, not a fashion show. Let's remember that. You want to be comfortable. You don't have to look good. No one cares. I promise you. And finally, number six is medication. Now, honestly, I have not found one that works for me yet, um, so I don't really take any of these like air sickness pills and the other things that are available for you to try and combat this, but that's not to say that they don't actually work. This being said, you obviously do have several types available. If any of them work for you, feel free to try them out. Obviously, I would also recommend implementing all of the other steps alongside that. But yeah, if, if tablets or wristbands or any of the other things work for you, Go ahead and use them. You can't, <laughs> you can never be too prepared. So that's it guys. Honestly, I could go on this topic forever and ever. Like I've suffered, I've learned, I've got some tips to share, okay? But I'm gonna stop here. Hopefully this helped you. Let me know if you guys try any of these ones for yourselves. If you do have any other tips that I haven't covered, let me know in the comments below, because I'd love to hear some more. And yeah, safe flying, I guess. Peace.